So good afternoon and good morning, depending on where in the world you are joining us from today. Thank you very much for joining our webinar, Paywalls and Pandemics, Ensuring Seamless Remote Access and Data Security, where we'll be showcasing the University of Melbourne's experience using the Open Athens and Lean Library integration. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce you to my colleagues who will also be presenting today. Uh, Caroline Gould, the Manager for Discovery at the University of Melbourne. Now, as I'm sure you can appreciate, this isn't the best time of day, well, night, for a presentation from Australia. And so we'll be delivering Caroline's sections of the webinar through a pre-recorded video. But then here with me, virtually, um, I'm delighted to introduce James Edwards, the International Sales Manager at Open Athens, and Daniel Horvath, our Product manager at Lean Library. I'm Nicola Langford, the Head of Development for International Markets at Lean Library. So I'm going to make a start and then I'm going to hand over to my colleagues. So our agenda for today, um, we're going to start by sharing some highlights from Melbourne's experience to whet your appetite for the rest of the uh, webinar. And then we're going to do a very brief intro into Open Athens and Lean Library for those of you who aren't familiar with our companies and what they do. Um, and then we're going to dive into the integration and the university and uh, sorry and the experience um, at the University of Melbourne. There'll be plenty of time for questions um, at the end, but we're also going to be monitoring the questions in the chat during the webinar. But if we don't pick them up during the webinar, please don't worry, we'll definitely address them at the end. Um, it's also probably a good time to point out that we'll be able to answer questions specifically on Open Athens and Lean Library today. If you have any questions that are specifically for Caroline, Caroline's very kindly agreed to answer those via email. And so please feel free to type them into the chat or to send them through to us. And then we'll make sure that Caroline gets them and we're able to get back to you with an answer. So I think this is a good way to start the webinar and Caroline's video will speak to this in more detail, but this shows the increase in usage that Melbourne has seen as a result of integrating with Open Athens and Lean Library. Um, so it's particularly remarkable, I think, the statistics when you think that this is in the context of the remote access challenges that everyone's had as a result of the pandemic. And what you can see here are the OA authentication points, which are our proxy for usage. And you can also see in the little bubbles, the growth in LL, um, sorry, lean library usage as well. Um, so I hope that shows you some of the potential benefits of the integration but we believe that there's also plenty of others as well. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a video of Caroline who's going to run this next section. So I will hand over to the video. I'm just going to run through a few slides that talk through our experience uh, in recent years when we've implemented both Open Athens and Lean Library in response to some uh, challenges we see for our users in their experience of library systems. So first of all, I should explain that when we're looking at the effectiveness of the discovery systems catalog and the other systems that are used for um, access to our collections, we don't look at things like page counts and um, how many different places a, a system is used from. We look at what our users experience is and see whether or not they are getting the resources they need at the point in time when they need them. So the research that we've done recently has shown us some very interesting things about the way our clients uh, re undertake their research and where they approach our information resources and how they expect to get access. We see, for instance, that a good 75% of our students, whether they're research students or undergraduate coursework students, are starting their search at Google. They're expecting that Google can help them to define their um, terminology or identify the best resources for them. And they start there because they have confidence that they can use Google. They've, they've learned over the years how they may do that to get the re results that they need. Many of them go on to Google Scholar 
And about half of them come then to the discovery systems or the other systems that we use. They seem to have a preference for one main search platform, either Google Scholar or Discovery for their information resources. But they do tend to use Google-like search uh, procedures when they're on any search system, no matter what it is. So what we wanted to do when we looked at, at um, the students' behaviour is not just find out where they are searching, but also get an idea of their entire um, information research process, because we want to see the points at which they're interacting with our systems and where they might be having problems. So what we've done here now, don't panic or reach for your extra strong magnifying glass. You don't need to read all the text. I'm just wanting to show you our student journey map, and you can get an idea here from the colours of the boxes on the screen as to how many problems we might have and how many uh, things we've got that, that seem to be working well. So at the top of the journey map there is, are a whole lot of dark blue boxes. Those just indicate the, pro, the section in the process where a person might be. And although we've laid this out in a linear format, it's not really a linear process. But our students will generally work through a few stages from when they're given an assignment and they go through looking at their required readings and defining keywords, doing their searching and um, then going right through the process of writing an assignment. When they do that, there's a little detail in the, in the other blue boxes about what they're actually doing. But you'll see we've got green points here that show where the students find really helpful resources and red points where they're coming across a roadblock. And almost all of the, the issues that they are having are in the point where they're performing searches and trying to open their information resources that they've found in those searches. Some of the problems can be caused by the fact that they, they are starting at Google instead of at one of the systems, and so they don't know if they have access to the resources they've found. Also, though, they have found real issues with some of the library systems, particularly the ones that are designed uh, that were designed some decades ago and haven't really changed a lot. So when we looked in some detail at the issues that they were having, we've identified a number of ways that we could change the systems to make it easier for them to use them. We've also done, um, uh, just in recent years, some satisfaction surveys on our systems to try to identify um, whether or not overall people are interested in them and whether the changes that we do make are making an improvement in people's satisfaction or they're making things worse. So this was our first run at getting a net promoter score for our discovery system. And you can see that, you know, it's okay. It's got a positive net promoter score, which is generally considered to be good. It could have been negative, but luckily it's not. Um, but you can see that it's kind of fluctuates. There are a fair few people who are pretty unhappy with it. And you'll notice the blue line running across the middle of the graph there. At the, when it dips the most, points in time where one of our information resources, like a major ebook vendor, had an outage and we weren't aware of that. No students reported it to us, but they did say they were unhappy with discovery. So um, we, we get a lot of impact from the experience of going onto vendor sites. The, the satisfaction with discovery will plummet if vendor sites have issues, particularly if there are issues in access. That survey was really good because apart from the like baseline score that we can use as a, a measure of whether or not we're getting better, we also got some direct comments from our students. And I, I feel particularly for the poor white person whose comments are highlighted in red there, you can hear them thumping their head against their desk. Um, clearly, the students are expecting a different experience to what they're having. When we looked into each of these comments, and these are not by any means all of the comments we received, but when we looked at these, we identified that all the problems that they were having here that are causing them so much frustration were related to the fact that we had a proxy server providing access and it was timing out or not recognising them as individuals or they were expecting functionality from that they would get elsewhere on the web and it wasn't available because they weren't logged into the particular vendor site. And this happened more and more frequently. I think when you look at the way the internet works now and websites in particular, people expect to be logged in to see a personal experience and they expect to do things like go in and drop a few things in their shopping cart, leave, shut their browser down, come back later and open their shopping cart and there are their things. So that doesn't happen when you're using uh, library systems, particularly if they've been set up with a proxy server. So these were not by any means the only issues we had. Some of the other access pain points are, are kind of caused by the way our 
our information environment is so fractured. So we're looking at, for instance, getting access if you go directly to a vendor, you might have to work through a process of finding your institution. For a big institution like us, where we've got a number of colleges, we've got um, up to 50 different research institutes and a whole lot of smaller institutions bundled within the university, people don't often know what to type in that academic institution box. They, they find that a bit challenging and they find the boxes with lots of options also quite confusing. Nobody, absolutely nobody seems to understand terminology like Open Athens and Shibboleth, including unfortunately many of the librarians. When our clients do go to our systems that are designed to help them to get through easily, they are often faced with screens like the little one we see here from our Open U Resolver that give them so many choices that they're overwhelmed. And very frequently, the easiest one to click through to is not the one at the top of the list or the most obvious one which can be uh, difficult for people. And we've had a number of our students make a comment like you see at the bottom of our of my points there. It looks like the list has been organised with the hardest things at the top. <laughs> so people find these um, library systems quite challenging and they find it um, difficult to understand why they're seeing so many screens when they're trying to click through to an information resource. So. That, those problems with our library systems are the reasons why we picked up um, Open Athens and Lean Library. So I'll hand over now to the, the team who will explain about that and I'll be back later on to talk to you about how we promoted both Lean Library and Open Athens. My name's James and I'm just going to give you a little intro into Open Athens. And to start off with, I would like to begin with the why, the how and the what. So why does Open Athens exist? Uh, so Open Athens exists because we wish to um, remove barriers to knowledge and connect people to information. Now, what I'm talking about barriers here, those are those paywalls, those login screens, uh, all a number of things that is essentially, you know, yes, yeah, stopping a user getting to what they want. And Caroline explained a lot of cases where that's happening at her university. And so how do we do that? Well, we provide a robust and a reliable gateway between that subscription-based content and those that need to access it. So uh, yeah, repeating there on what, what that subscription-based is, it could be you know, those publishers and the journals, et cetera, that a library subscribes to, but it can also be software and things as well um, that you know, you're just trying to get into there, but you're finding yourself uh, held up or blocked from accessing what you want. And so we provide that gateway solution to fix, um, to fix that issue there. And what you end up with then is a single sign-on software that enables people to access digital content. Uh, and, you know, single sign-on can mean a number of different things. You know, you might have one username and password and you use that to access everything. Um, but what we mean at Open Athens uh, and uh, we look to do is true single sign-on. So you will use one username and password. This could be an existing set of credentials you already have. Um, and once you log in to any solution within that, within that single sign-on environment, you don't need to log in again. So you don't need to log in separately for each publisher, et cetera. One login, you've logged in once, and then from then on, you can just click um, to all of the content that you like. And so that's what Open Athens then ends up providing you. And some of the things you know, that we believe here that Open Athens is that we believe uh, you know, accessing that subscription-based content should be fast, easy, and pain-free. Um, Caroline touched on many good examples there of how an end user isn't sometimes getting that experience, even though you think you've got the solutions in place to get there. But actually, when you listen to them, they're, they're, you know, there are bits that are difficult. Um, it's, you know, most of it can be down to just you know, multiple passwords. Luckily, that's not such a common thing now, but certainly clunky or confusing software or an unfriendly user journey or experience is some of the uh, ways in which you know, there are problems with it. And we want to help remove all that uh, and make it as easy access for them as possible. And, you know, finally getting all of this right, you know, you, you then are helping put that information in the right hands. So from a librarian's perspective, you know, you know that your users are getting that access in a nice, easy manner. Um, so that makes you, you know, your job much easier. And for your users, it's really allowing them to get that information as quick as possible and make them achieve great things. If it's an academic, you know, it's helping their studies be much quicker and more efficient at that. And that's really important, helping them get those best grades that they can. 
And so, yeah, as I said, you know, all this coming together, you know, it bring, provides lots of good value to not just the library, the university or whichever institution you might be from, um, but also those users themselves. So, you know, you will have those happy users. They're not getting those queries, you know, they're not having to come to you and ask, how do I get this? They are just accessing that um, information as seamlessly as possible that they can. And so that means there's going to be less minimal admin side for you. With OpenAffins, it's a fully hosted product. It's, a, you know, there's nothing to install locally. So the administration of it is actually very light, you know, and, um, you know, should you want to know more, we can provide a demo. We can actually see those features and the admin side and how it is very much a light touch and controlled there by the library. You can also have peace of mind. Open Athens, you know, we are, or we, we believe that we are one of the leaders in this authentication space in the library. Um, and by that, you know, we're using this federated method of access. Uh, Caroline did touch on there using a proxies and things like that and some of the issues there. Open Athens, we try to use that only as a, you know, as a last resort. Primarily, we're using the sort of leading and most secure method of access to those resources, um, which is also the most reliable as well for your users and, and your institution. And alongside this, some of the benefits it brings is some more statistics and insights. Um, so we can actually show you not just um, you know, usage or which resources are being used, but actually what type of user is using them. Um, as we were using a university, some of the examples there, they might, for example, tell us which faculty a, a, member, a user is part of. Um, it could be just whether they are a staff or a student, whether they're alumni, whether they are a postgraduate. You can you know, see actually which group of users is accessing which resources. And that gives you a much better insight to see which ones are most valuable and to who. And also you can look at the other end of the scale. You could see where there's little usage going on. And maybe do they need to be contacted and reached out to to see how they can engage better with the library resources um, and help you, you know, provide those better library services as well. So it's really good to see both ends of that. And Open Athens can provide you those statistics that you can't perhaps get with just your counter reports or the reports you might get from the publishers themselves. And really one of the key things is with Open Athens, leaving all the difficult stuff to us. The authentication landscape is pretty tricky. Um, there is lots going on. You know, I try not to use complicated words, but you might hear SAML mentioned and federated and these proxies and stanzas and all these things going on there. Well, you know, you kind of leave a lot of that to us. We will manage that part. Um, so you can you know, go on and, and you know, do the other important tasks you have as a librarian. Uh, and we're managing all the difficult stuff in the hosted solution on your behalf. So Open Athens now, we've been going for um, yeah, 25 years now. Um, and you know, through that time now, we're now helping over 4,000 organizations enable you know, access to journals, uh, databases, ebooks, and as I mentioned earlier, software solutions as well. So whether that be um, discovery services uh, and also solutions like Lean Library, how we can help there as well. It's not just those journals, but also software as well that Open Athens can work with. And that means, you know, we've got 5 million users across the globe uh, using Open Athens to access those resources. Uh, it could be the academic sector. Yes, that's where we, you know, we're very um, used quite a lot, but also in the medical, the corporate, um, public libraries, anywhere where someone you know, has that need to gain access to content, we, we can help provide them with a solution. And our vision here is to be the world's most user-friendly information access management experience. Um, now, we, as I said earlier, it's quite a complicated landscape, but we really do believe we are one of the leaders, particularly in the library space, at uh, providing that user-friendly uh, experience. We speak do a lot of investigation with the end users such as like caroline did as well but also with the librarians as well to see how we can improve not just our solution but just the, actually how methods are right now to um to improve that 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 experience uh, so you may have heard of ra21 um dot all, uh, if you go there resource access for the 21st century and the seamless access that, um, solution that's coming out of that we're in helping and involved in those discussions as well because we really do want to provide that you know best user experience that we can and whatever open Athens can help to do that we, we will um we will strive to get there as well and then so now just you know part of today's uh webinar as well is our partnership now 
we wish there was one solution that just did everything uh, but i think you know that, that's that's quite rare in most things for that to happen and there's often you know you need those bits that are going to work together really well in order to provide what you want you know is that that users here for them to get the uh, the content in this case um so our partnerships were very particular on the you know that's user centered and that's particularly where lean library come in here we really believe that you know what they're trying to achieve aligns very well with us and they provide you know another key step in, in providing that that goal that we want of this um, you know this really great user user experience um, and so you know our partners you can be you know you know there that if this is a product that we trust and we like you know and how we can collaborate together you know they're going to integrate well and you can also get that great support that, that's required to come with it um, so that's my part now as a very brief intro into Open Athens I'm now going to pass over to I believe is it Daniel or Nicola I may have not so much on just to me for the time being. So it's over to Nicola now. And yeah, any questions, obviously, about Open Athens, we can take them at the end. Thank you. Thanks, James. That was great. Um, and so now I'm just going to very quickly um, give you an introduction to Lean Library or reintroduce you if you're already familiar with us. Um, and then we're going to dive straight into the integration with Open Athens um, and what that experience was like with details from Caroline. Um, and so I want to take this opportunity to talk to you about the latest developments at Lean Library. Um, oh, clicking. <laughs> um, and some of the changes we've been going through in the last year. So to do this, I'm going to show you this short video, which is a bit of a statement of intent from us about our plans for the future. So, with me. This is your patron, and this is their workflow. And off they go on their exciting journey. Oh, so sorry of discovery and learning but getting to what they need takes your patron outside their workflow bouncing them around from one site to another making access difficult and time consuming you want to help them but how by putting the librarian in the workflow with lean library you can bring your library into your patrons workflows giving them instant access to library services resources and support helping them reach their goals lean library take your library to your patrons. So I hope you, oh, sorry. I hope you liked that um, video. Oh, have I gone on one too far? Oh, no, sorry about that. Um, so I think what the video shows you is that we're not just about access. I mean, of course, today we're showing you how we can streamline access with Open Athens, um, but we're also about bringing the library into the workflow. Um, and although today we are going to just focus on um, the access solution, but we are now in the process of launching other features that bring other aspects of the library into the patrons workflow. So it means that we'll be able to bring things like your discovery service or your lib guides into your users workflow. And so rather than the patrons having to access these through the library portal, we'll be able to surface the services on the relevant sites so that we can bring, for example, discovery search results onto Google Scholar or we can bring the libguide for a particular publisher onto the publisher's website. But we're not here to talk about those today, um, but if you are interested in them, then please do get in touch and we can tell you all about those future integrations. Um, so our mission um, is now to help redefine and amplify the power of the academic library to advance student learning and researcher impact. So that's why we're so focused on how we can help libraries get into the patient's work, flight patrons workflow. As Caroline mentioned in her video, the user journey for patrons has changed dramatically and we expect it to continue to change. And so we need to ensure that we can maintain um, mission relevance for libraries and librarian, librarians. And so that's what our focus is at Lean Library. Um, in that respect, oh, sorry, 
clicking problems. So in that respect, we're currently working on a white paper on the future of the patron librarian relationship, which we call librarian futures. Uh, this survey has been running for a couple of months now, and we'd love it if you haven't yet participated, if you'd like to uh, share your thoughts, share it with your colleagues. We've had well over 3000 responses so far, which is great. Um, we're getting fabulous engagement and it feels like we're really addressing an issue of relevance. Um, because a lot has been written about the future of the library and not necessarily enough about what the role of the librarian is in that context. So it would be great to get your thoughts. And so please do take a look at the survey at www.librarianfutures.com. And you do have the opportunity to win um, one of those fabulous t-shirts that you can see there. So please do take some time to do that. Um, and so then finally, just before handing over, I wanted to show you this slide. So this um, shows you the different products that are in our portfolio. So the first product, Lean Library Access, is our comprehensive access solution. And that's what we're talking about and focusing on today, um, the integration of Lean Library Access with Open Athens and Melbourne's experience of how that works. Um, but the other products we have, which relate to our new ambition of expanding into other parts of the library and being able to deliver other library services directly into the Patreon workflow our workflow for libguide so this is an integration with springshare um, and we also have lean library features which is our enterprise solution and includes integrations with discovery service publishers and lots more but we're not here to talk about that today but i just want you to give you a sort of overview of where our three products sit. Um, and so now I'm going to hand over to Daniel, our product manager at Lean Library, to talk you through the integration um, with Lean Library and Open Athens at the University of Melbourne. Thanks, Daniel. Now, before heading into straight into sort of like an overview of different features that we at Lean Library are able to provide to your patrons, um, I'd like to just quickly get back to a number of different points that were rightfully pointed out by well, first of all, Caroline and then James and 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 well, I'm, I'm also quite sure that most of these pain points and difficulties that uh, that both the patrons and the librarians are facing lately are going to be pretty familiar to all of you, um, especially given the previous times when uh, when there was quite a big push uh, of being able to get resources, get access to resources when off campus, at least um, majority of uh, uh, in the cases. Now, this was also something that we touched upon previously, but I just wanted to get back to it um, just for one more moment. Now, there are a number of uh, research, uh, researches and experience and, and, and sort of um, um, uh, case, case studies uh, being done around this topic. Um, but basically what we also at Lean Library see and have been experiencing with, with clients is that um, many of the students will just not start their research process at the discovery layer. Now, th that is too bad. We, we don't, uh, uh, we, we basically believe that the discovery should be the best, the discovery is the best place to, to start a research. Now, that is the, uh, the, uh, the location where all of the licensed, okay, all of the licensed academic um, content are uh, very easily accessible to all of your patrons. But it, as it was pointed out, still, too far, uh, with too many, too many patrons and, and researchers will start a journey at Google and Google Scholar. Now to demonstrate what it results in and what kind of problems uh, this results, results in and difficulties, I really just wanted to quick show you this, uh, uh, this, uh, this slide. This basically demonstrates a typical workflow that uh, a patron will experience when starting uh, with a query at Google Scholar. Now the first click is basically it just clicking the article with which the end user will then get redir be redirected to the publisher sites. And as it was also more pointed out, um, many of the authentication systems uh, and their names, Open Athens, uh, Shibboleth, Easy Proxy, these words are not necessarily known to most of the people. And so when, uh, when uh, uh, publishers provide a number of different authentication systems and integrations to those authentication systems on their websites, which already is quite different from publisher to publisher, just to make it a bit more difficult. Um, it usually gets quite confusing. Um, 
you have to first select the kind of authentication system that you that your university uses. Then you will have to um, uh, find your your institution from the drop down menu, and finally you're going to be able to sign on with your uh, with your institutional credentials. Um, and only then you will be able to get back to the article level and make your way uh, to being able to download the PDF if that's what you're looking for. Now we have uh, we've seen this to be around 12 clicks, which is basically just a bit under four minutes, which is quite time consuming uh, only to get to a, a PDF. Now, as a, um, on, on the other hand, I'd like to just showcase how with our integration with Open Athens, uh, it seems and it looks like to a typical workflow. Again, starting from Google Scholar. A patron starts for, uh, looks for an article and uh, uh, with our Google Scholar integration, we are able to uh, surface the, high, uh, the quick links to the institutional discovery layer um, where the patrons uh, are able to find the library preferred links and with a click of a button, they're able to get to the publisher site and then therefore being able to download the PDF in full text. Now, as a contrast, this is four clicks and just under one minute. So the difference is quite drastic. This is one particular solution that we are uh, able to offer at Lean Library, but there are a, a few other features that I'd like to just show. Um, we are very proud of being the, first, uh, the only providers the, uh, in, in, our, in our industry, being able to provide um, uh, alternative uh, alternative locations for ebook uh, ebooks. Basically, um, we're able to find uh, uh, licensed ebooks uh, so that when uh, a patron of yours is looking for an ebook on any location, uh, which is not licensed at that location but is at another, another location, with a button we are able to redirect that user um, to the licensed location and also manage authentication in the meantime. Now this uh, works also with not only uh, institutional um, uh, licenses, but we are also uh, able to surface open, uh, open access repositories such as Unpaywall and core.ac. Um, our solution also works on aggregator source content, uh, which is usually another source of confusion and frustration. And as a last resource, resort, uh, result, if there is no uh, institutional license that we are able to utilize, nor there is open access um, uh, versions of the particular academic resources, we are then able to integrate with the library's interlibrary loan, loan or document delivery uh, integrations. And another feature um, uh, which, is, uh, which is widely used in many of the cases when, for example, um, the institution's main authentication system is not able to authenticate to certain uh, resources is our access messages with which libraries are able to place custom messages on any location uh, be, and in this, in this uh, example that you're seeing on the right side of the screen, um, this message basically provides, a me uh, this uh, pop-up provides a message and a link to more information um, for that uh, particular e-resource domain, which basically says that, yeah, you have access to this resource. Don't, uh, you should not uh, like, uh, uh, subscribe yourself. Just click here and we are going to be able to uh, provide you with a username and password that will allow you to authenticate to this resource as well. Now, many ask, many would ask, how, uh, how, does, how, does this, how does this extension work? What would our patrons have to do in order to start using this? And I just wanted to show you quickly this video, which basically provides uh, this whole process of, uh, of uh, installation. And the extension can be downloaded from every major uh, browser stores or just simply from our uh, website, which is, which is being shown right now, um, which uh, basically is just two clicks. And once downloaded, and it's going to be shown in, in, in just a second, your patrons are going to be able to select your institution from the drop-down uh, menu. In this case, University of Melbourne. Click Save, and this extension is just going to be working in the back, uh, basically taking over all of these pains and difficulties from your patrons and researchers. Up next, as just a summary, I really just uh, I think it's a it's a great a great opportunity to showcase you with another short video how this workflow then looks with uh, a bit of patron that has uh, the extension often, uh, downloaded. The extension looks uh, the patron looks for gold 
uh, as mentioned, clicks on uh, uh, the link that takes the user to the discovery layer of the, of the institution. It is a little bit too fast. Let me just get back here. Um, clicks the online source, uh, in this case, institutional uh, physics journals, and then just clicks the PDF, which then allows the patron to get access to the PDF straight away. Now, when it comes to configuration of this, uh, of this integration, um, we really need essentially three things, but don't worry, our support and uh, support team will be uh, guiding you through uh, the whole process and it's going to be uh, supporting you with all of, all, most of the configurations we, really. um, but essentially we'll need three sets of information. First of all, well, uh, for the authentication in integration, we need the Open Athens Entity ID and the Open Athens Scope. This is just to mention, uh, however, we are able to, to, uh, to obtain these, so there is no need um, for your library to be supporting these details, but there will be needed uh, from you is essentially the list of e-resource domains on which uh, our extension should be triggering and therefore providing access, easy access to your licensed resources. Um, this is just a list of uh, domains really, um, which, uh, which will then tell the extension every time your patron gets to any of those domains. Uh, it has the extension saying, hey, this is a licensed resource. We might be able to help your patron here. Um, and before actually closing the presentation, so sorry, I think this is the time to, uh, for me to hand back uh, to Caroline. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'll just take you through a few slides talking about how we promoted Lean Library and Open Athens to our patrons and then talk about our results from uh, our promotions and our uh, implementation. So first of all, I'll start out by saying that we didn't really promote Open Athens to our patrons. We implemented Lean Library first in order to smooth the transition of, for our patrons from Easy Proxy over to Open Athens. And so in order to do that, we wanted to try to identify the people who were using Easy Proxy and not really coming to the library systems. If you remember from the beginning of the presentation where I talked about that big group of people, 75% of whom would start off on Google and some would 70% stay on Google Scholar, many of those never come to the library systems at all. So it is hard to promote something to them. And certainly putting it on the library website is not gonna get their attention because they're not going there. So we did. We do have pretty big followings on our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So we did promote Lean Library there, but we found the most effective promotion was by putting it onto the library proxy error page. And as we migrated from the proxy over to Open Athens, we removed things from the proxy so that the error page showed more and more frequently and more people therefore saw the ad for Lean Library. This was really effective actually, that point of need promotion. But in addition to promoting things to our um, clients directly, we also wanted to make sure that the library staff and the faculty were able to support people to, to make the same transition. So I created a little worksheet, which Lean Library will share with you if you want to have a good look at it. It's just a PDF with a whole lot of worked examples for how to implement Lean Library in your own browser. Um, and then examples of how Lean Library does what it does. So how it redirects you to our subscription on another site, how it gives you access to username and password things, how it integrates with the um, document delivery or interlibrary loan system. So a worked example or a couple of worked examples on each of those has um, sent out in a worksheet that the staff could work through in their own time, it was pretty effective in getting the library staff up to speed with how their products worked. And what that did then was um, allow us to see a pretty big increase in our usage. Um, we've got at least 20% of our users now using Lean Library. And I would, you know, we've got 70 to 70,000 users in any month of our library systems. So to have 20% of them using something is actually, that makes it pretty successful. We started out in uh, promoting Lean Library in October, 2019. You can see the big jump in uh, users of Lean Library when we put that ad onto the proxy error page. Um, through October, 2019 through to January, 2020 was our implementation phase for Open Athens. And so then, we saw another jump when we, when we switched over to Open Athens with people seeing the ads and new students coming on and having Lean Library promoted to them. We've done no real promotion since then, 
uh, and it's simply grown organically as people have found out how useful it is. They do see the ads for Lean Library on the library website and in their new users library guides when they start up with the university. So the results are not just about you know, us getting a lot more people on there um, using these systems. Uh, the results are also improvements in uh, our experience. We were put into a really good position prior to the pandemic because we had both Lean Library and Open Athens uh, and our clients really used them. They were already working effectively. So um, you, you've seen this one before, you've seen our growth in authentications and users. Um, as I've mentioned, we were implementing in January 2020 uh, Open Athens, so that those figures are probably not reliable, but you can see the big growth in usage um, in subsequent months. Certainly when the pandemic occurred, we were in that good position and our users had a better experience because of this. They have seamless access off campus it's exactly the same experience on campus or off campus. They open up their web browser, they'll log in to one university system, could be any system, doesn't have to be a library system. If they've logged in via the university central authentication, Lean Library and Open Athens will then just help them to, to log in or to access any other library site without an additional login prompt. True single sign on. They don't need the VPN to do that. It just needs a browser session with Lean Library installed and get one um, university sign on has occurred and Open Athens will take care of the rest. So that's been a real improvement for our users in the way that they access resources. It's also been great for us because we were really getting hammered by security problems before. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you who work in the IT area, uh, even if it's in the IT area with the library, you will understand the issues we've been having recently. The, the number of people who were trying to access our collections and the number of systems that have been set up to um, collect user credentials and then use them um, to get information on demand from other people. Uh, I'm sure you all know what I mean. <laughs> we, because we have such a large collection, we, we've been targeted quite heavily. And so we wanted to make sure that we were protecting our users as well as we, and that meant making sure that our clients were using the university's central authentication system, which has the best security that we can manage and meeting the privacy and security standards of the IT department. Certainly Open Athens does that. And that central account management then makes it much easier for us to ensure that our vendors' resources are protected as they should be. It also removed an access and monitoring burden that we had uh, and put that back with the IT department where it really belongs. They have much better tools for monitoring security breaches and uh, for ensuring that access is by authorised users. And so um, implementing these tools has improved the back end processes as well as making it much, much easier for our clients to get to resources. So that's pretty much the end of it for us. I'm perfectly happy to answer any questions anyone has. The team will be able to share my email address or you can simply Google me at the University of Melbourne and send me an email. If you have any questions at all about Open Athens or Lean Library in a university environment. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks very much to um, Caroline for the video. We will pass on our thanks to Caroline and to Daniel and James. Um, has anyone got any questions? I can't see any in the chat currently. There okay. is actually one question. Yeah, I just yeah. see. There was one. Question. Yes, indeed. Um, so it in the ah, uh, e books. Absolutely. Uh, we are able to surface your ebooks uh, holdings and collections. Uh, so that is, uh, that is of course, uh, no different than for any, other, any publishers and, and academic journals or articles. Um, and essentially it can work with any publishers as well. So it also doesn't have any restrictions with regards of that either. There is the second part of the question. We find them impossible to get through Open Athens. Um, so in that case, I'm not I'm not exactly sure what uh, the the uh, the issue might be. What what's the um, the exact issue there? Uh, what is uh, 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 the limitation? But we'd be very happy to um, uh, to look into this if you could provide us and maybe James a little bit more information about it. I'm not not sure, James, if you're familiar with this specific instance. 
Uh, not not the specific one. I mean, obviously, there are publishers, if they are particularly unique or small, um, that they may yeah, not be quite open happens compatible. Um, it could also be, however, just that they may not be set up correctly, and we would happy to revisit that. Um, but yeah, um, certainly, uh, we can take that question offline, look at your account and see what can be done. And I can share that information with Lean Library to see if they might be able to actually do something um, different there. That's great. And even if, and there was that one case that, uh, that we also briefly touched upon the access messages. I think, I believe it was, um, I'm not sure which publisher it, it was, but many institutions have a, a sort of similar um, difficulty with uh, newspapers, for example, New York Times or, or those kinds of um, resources. We see many, many uh, examples uh, for those cases where an access message is basically being provided to the patrons where custom uh, credentials can then be, or at least a way uh, and an email address where those custom credentials can then be obtained uh, and given to your patron. So that is absolutely something that even if, um, if, uh, if, if it's impossible, if, it's, if it cannot go through open admins, there might be a solution for that uh, from our perspective. Thanks, Daniel and James. Yeah, that looks like there's a question in the chat box um, from yeah. Andy Bourne, who's just asked, does the Open Athens slash Lean Library integration depend on having wafers URLs available for each publisher platform? It shouldn't be. Um, that's more, more something we, we need to care uh, quite a bit more precisely when we are integrating with Chivalet, but that, uh, that's not the case with Open Athens. But if... Um anyone thinks of a question after then please do contact us um, after the event and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have and of course remember if there's anything for Caroline do let us know and we can pass that on or as she said you can find her on Google <laughs> and she will um, reply to you happily so I think all that's left is for um was to say thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks to Daniel and James and to Lauren, who's been helping us out in the background there. So thank you very much. I hope you found this interesting and useful, and we hope to see you at our next webinars very soon. Thanks very much. <laughs>